Dr. Jacob Neiman here, board certified pain medicine doctor. And recently, I noticed that several of you were asking about the difference between an epidural steroid injection and a nerve ablation procedure. Hit the like button below and stick around for the entire video, because by the end, you'll understand exactly what each treatment does, which anatomical areas they target, and most importantly, how to know which one is right for your situation. Hit that like button, subscribe, and let's break it down. Here's the most important thing you need to understand right from the start. Epidural steroid injections and nerve ablations treat two totally different sources of pain in your low back. Think of it like this. Epidural steroid injections treat pain arising from irritated nerve roots, while nerve ablations, also known as radiofrequency ablation treatments, treat pain arising from structures called facet joints. So the first question we always need to answer is, where is your pain coming from? Part one, epidural steroid injections, treating nerve pain. Let's start with what people are more familiar with, epidural steroid injections. These treat inflamed nerve roots, the nerves that exit your spinal cord and travel down into your legs. When a disc herniates or bulges, it can press against these nerve roots. When bone spurs from arthritis narrow the space where these nerves exit, they get compressed or inflamed, which is what causes sciatica, that shooting, burning, electric pain that travels from your buttock, down your leg, sometimes all the way to your foot. Well, nerve root pain has very specific characteristics. It shoots down your leg, often following a specific path. You might also have numbness, tingling, or weakness in your leg or foot. And here's the key. The leg pain is usually worse than the back pain. If your main issue is leg pain and your back pain is secondary, you're probably dealing with a nerve root issue. Now, how does the injection work exactly? Well, an epidural steroid injection delivers anti-inflammatory medicine directly into the epidural space. That's the space around the inflamed nerve root. Think of it like this. Your nerve is on fire from inflammation. We're putting out that fire with a targeted dose of steroid, usually right around the nerve and disc interface. The steroid reduces the swelling around the nerve. When the nerve swelling goes down, nerve pain stops firing the pain signal. These injections work best for people with disc herniations, spinal stenosis causing nerve compression, or acute nerve root inflammation. The ideal candidate has leg pain that's usually worse than their low back pain. Their MRI usually shows a disc herniation or nerve compression, and their nerve symptoms match a specific nerve distribution pattern. Some people get relief for several weeks, some get relief for several months. Some people get fortunate and the inflammation settles down permanently. We typically see the best results in the first two to six weeks after the injection. The goal with the injection though, is to reduce the inflammation enough so that you can then go on to perform physical exercises and progress your rehabilitation. Let's talk about nerve ablation, treating facet joint pain. Let's dive deeper into what structure we're actually treating here. So nerve ablation, also known as RFA, treats pain from arthritic facet joints. As you can see, I'm pointing to facet joints here. You have them on both sides of your spine, and you actually have them from your neck all the way down to your sacrum. These are the small joints in the back that allow your spine to bend and twist. Each vertebral body has two facet joints connecting it to the vertebral body above and below. So you've got a lot of these joints stacked up your spine. Over time, these joints can become arthritic just like your knee or hip or shoulder. When facet joints become arthritic, they can cause pain. But here's the key difference. We're not treating the joint itself with the ablation. We're actually treating the tiny nerve that carries pain signals from those joints to your brain. These nerves are called medial branch nerves. They're about the size of a strand of spaghetti. Okay, so what type of pain do facet joints cause? This feels completely different from nerve root pain. It's usually a deep, achy pain in your lower back. It might spread into your buttock or upper thigh, but rarely goes below the knee. It's worse with leaning backward or standing for prolonged periods of time. Twisting also makes it worse. And here's the key. The back pain is your main complaint, not leg pain. If your back pain is killing you and the leg symptoms are just eh, minimal or non-existent, you're probably dealing with facet joint pain. Radiofrequency ablation uses heat to create a controlled burn on those tiny medial branch nerves. We use a special needle with a heated tip. 
we position it right next to the nerve using x-ray guidance. After thoroughly numbing the surrounding tissue, we heat the tip of the needle to about 80 degrees Celsius for about 90 seconds. This heat creates a tiny burn on the nerve that interrupts the nerve's ability to transmit pain signals. Think of it like partially cutting a phone line. These facet joints still might be arthritic, but the pain message really can't get through to the brain anymore. The nerve ablation works best for people with confirmed facet joint arthritis who've had successful diagnostic tests first. And this is really important. Before we do an ablation, we always do two test injections with numbing medicine first. If those test injections give you significant pain relief and you're able to better do your activities without as much pain, even if it's temporary, that confirms that the facet joints are your source of pain and the ablation is likely to work well for you. If the test injections don't help, we don't do the ablation and we continue investigating the cause of your pain. Because we're creating a lesion on the nerve, the relief lasts much longer. Most patients get relief anywhere between six months to two to three years. Eventually, the nerve can regenerate and grow back. When that happens, the pain can return as well. But the good news is that we can repeat the procedure if it helped the first time. Many of my patients get ablations every 12 to 18 months and do really well with that approach. It comes down to three things, your age, pain pattern, physical exam, and your imaging. Sciatica tends to be more common between the ages of 30 and 50, whereas 52% of those 65 or older are likely to have a component of facet pain. If your main issue is leg pain that shoots down below the knee with numbness or tingling or weakness, that points toward nerve root pain, which means that you're in the epidural steroid injection territory. If your main symptom is low back pain that's worse with leaning back, standing, and twisting, and usually doesn't travel down your leg, you're likely in facet joint pain nerve ablation territory. Now, we do do specific tests in the office to help differentiate. So for nerve root pain, we do straight leg tests or nerve tension tests. We check your reflexes. We also test for specific areas of numbness that match those nerve distributions. For facet joint pain, we do extension and rotation tests. We press on the facet joints to see if that reproduces your pain as well. Your MRI or CT scans can also provide clues, but never give us a definitive diagnosis. If we see a disc herniation pressing on a nerve or spinal arthritis narrowing in the nerve space, that supports more than nerve compression pain. If we see bone spurs on the facet joints, facet joint enlargement, or fluid within the joints, that points more towards facet pain. But really the best way to truly diagnose pain from here is to have the nerve block done. But here's the tricky part. A lot of patients have both nerve pain and facet joint pain. Yes, unfortunately, you can have disc problems and facet joint arthritis at the same time. I know, life really isn't fair. When that happens, we have to use your symptoms and exam findings, and sometimes we use the procedures to figure out which one is the primary pain generator. So now I'm gonna dispel some myths. Let me clear some things up, because I hear these all too often. Myth number one, they're basically the same thing. No, 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 like we just reviewed. They treat completely different structures, one treats inflamed nerves going to your leg, the other treats tiny nerves coming from arthritic joints in your back. Myth number two, ablation is more aggressive, so I should try injections first. Well, not necessarily. If you have facet joint pain, an epidural steroid injection won't help you. It's not about which one is more aggressive, it's about figuring out the cause of your pain. Myth number three, if one doesn't work, the other one will. Well, maybe. Perhaps if your pain is coming from both sources. If you have pure nerve root pain, the nerve ablation won't help. If you have pure facet joint pain, epidural injections won't help. Myth number four, ablation is permanent. No, the nerves regenerate over time. Most patients need repeat procedures every 12 to 18 months. Myth number five, these procedures fix the underlying problem. This is false. They simply manage the pain. They don't reverse disc herniations or cure arthritis. Their use is primarily to provide relief while you work on other aspects of your treatment, like strengthening exercises, physical therapy, and other lifestyle modifications. Here's some real patient examples just to illustrate the difference. Let's call one of them Jennifer, 52 years old. She came to me with severe right leg pain and shot from her buttock all the way down to her foot. She had numbness in her toes, sitting was unbearable, she couldn't drive more than 10 minutes without having to pull over. Her MRI showed a disc herniation at L5-S1 pressing on her right S1 nerve root. Her physical exam showed a positive nerve root tension sign on the right and numbness on the outside of her foot. 
Her pain pattern matched the first sacral nerve distribution perfectly. This is classic nerve root pain. I recommended a transferaminal epidural steroid injection targeting that S1 nerve root. Within a week after the injection, her leg pain decreased by 70%. She was able to sit comfortably again. She started physical therapy. Three months later, she's doing great. Now, patient number two. Let's call him Robert, 61 years old. He came to me with chronic low back pain. He described it as a deep ache that kind of ran across his low back on both sides. It spread into both buttocks, but never really went below his knees. Standing and walking made it worse. Bending backward made it worse. Sitting actually made it feel a little better. His MRI showed significant facet joint arthritis at L4-5 and L5-S1. There weren't any large disc herniations or areas of really severe nerve compression. His physical exam showed pain with extension and rotation. Twisting also reproduced his exact pain. I recommended two diagnostic nerve blocks first, both of which provided 80% relief for around eight hours. And during that time, he was better able to stand, specifically 30 to 45 minutes longer than usual. After completing the radiofrequency ablation on both sides of his low back, he started feeling better around three weeks later. Around six weeks, his pain decreased by overall 75%. He's now 14 months out and still doing well. An epidural steroid injection would not have helped him. His pain wasn't coming from nerve compression. It was coming from the arthritic, painful facet joints. So which one is right for you? Start by asking yourself these questions. Is my leg pain worse than my back pain? If yes, you're probably dealing with nerve root pain. Epidural steroid injection territory, that is. Now, is my back pain worse than my leg pain? If yes, you're probably dealing with facet joint pain or nerve ablation territory. Does my pain shoot below my knee? If yes, more likely to be nerve root pain. Is my pain mostly in my low back and buttock, rarely going below my knee? If yes, then likely facet joint pain. Do I have numbness, tingling, or weakness in my leg? If yes, nerve root pain. Is my pain worse when I bend backward or stand for long periods? If yes, facet joint pain. Use this information to get a sense of what is going on, but you'll need to undergo a proper evaluation by your pain specialist who can put all these pieces together. Epidural steroid injections and nerve ablations are both valuable tools for treating symptoms arising from structures in the low back. Just remember that they treat different structures. Epidural steroid injections treat inflamed nerve roots that cause sciatica and leg pain. Nerve ablations treat tiny nerves that carry pain signals from arthritic facet joints. If you've been getting epidural steroid injections for months without relief, and your main complaint is back pain without significant leg symptoms, you might be getting the wrong treatment. And if you've been told you need an ablation, but your main complaint is severe leg pain with numbness and tingling, make sure someone's evaluated for nerve pain and considered an epidural steroid injection as part of your treatment plan. Please hit the like button and subscribe below. I'm committed to breaking down complex pain management topics into information you can actually use. If you want more information on lumbar epidural steroid injections, check out the next video in the end screen where you'll learn everything you need to know. See you in the next video.